Hi there, if you're editing a video in DaVinci Resolve and you've got people talking, one way to make the video sound a bit more professional is to add a little bit of compression to the dialogue and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. The difference between the quietest part and the loudest part of any piece of audio is called its dynamic range. If I were to talk in a monotone voice like this and keep my voice the same level of volume, then that would have a quite a low dynamic range. However, if I talked really quiet and then really loud and then quiet and then really loud there'd be a greater dynamic range there of the audio. A compressor helps to reduce that dynamic range so the volume doesn't go up and down quite as much and it can help to balance out things and make the dialogue or the vocals sound much better overall. So here we are on the Fairlight page and I've just got this single audio track here this is just me talking. Arnold suggests that there's two approaches to creating a clear vision. You can actually see at a visual level how much dynamic range you're likely to have here. If I just zoom in a little bit you can see we've got this loud peak here and then some really quiet sections there so there's definitely some dynamic range there that we could maybe compress using a compressor. To add some compression to this come over to the dynamics section for this track and double click on this big square next to dynamics for the track you want. This is going to open up the compression dialog. There's a number of presets you can use to get started quickly such as this dialog compression preset and we'll just go and play this back suggest that there's two you can see this line here is telling us how much the compressor is reducing those louder sections so we're getting roughly about negative three decibel reduction there for the louder parts there's loads of things you can tweak with this compressor. The main one is this threshold. And if I move this to the left, notice that line moves to the left. That means the compression will kick in for quieter parts. And if I move it to the right, it means the compression won't kick in until the signal gets quite loud. I'm just gonna play this back and I'm gonna change the threshold. Notice when it's all the way over here, we don't get any gain reduction. And as I move this to the left, we get more and more gain reduction for quieter and quieter parts. The next most important control is this ratio here. As I move this up and down, notice this part of the graph is giving us a simulation of what's going to happen. A lower ratio means that the volume will be reduced less and less, and a bigger ratio means that the volume will be reduced a lot more. When you're working with dialogues, you definitely don't want it anywhere near this high of a ratio. You want to try and keep it between 2 to 1 and 3 to 1, just to get a more natural sounding result. If you're working with a person that has a really big dynamic range, then you might have to go a bit more than this 3 to 1, but if you do, just be aware that it might affect the the realisticness of the voice and just be careful to listen to it when you go above three. Let me just show you what a really high ratio will sound like. Arnold suggests that there's two approaches to creating a clear vision. It sounds pretty terrible. So we'll just set this back to about 2.5 to 1. So let's just go set the threshold. Arnold suggests that there's two approaches. What you don't want to do is set a threshold so low down here that you're getting a lot of gain reduction all the way down here. You want to aim for anywhere between negative three, maybe negative six for your gain reduction. So somewhere around there is okay. Another thing you can try and fine tune is this attack speed here. This is how quickly the compression kicks in after the incoming audio exceeds this threshold. So you can experiment with values between 10 and 20 to see how that sounds. Because compression reduces the overall volume, you can use this makeup slider to compensate. For example, if we're getting about negative three average gain reduction, then we might want to move this slider up to about the three mark to compensate for that negative three gain reduction. Learning how to use things such as compression, EQ, sidechains, and all that good stuff can really help you massage your audio in your video and really take it to the next level and make it sound really professional. That's what you'll learn about in my Fairlight course. Check the first link in the description or scan this QR code to learn more. All right, back to the video. What I'm going to do now is just play this back without the compression, so I'm just going to toggle the switch to turn it off. Arnold suggests that there's two approaches to creating a clear vision. And with it on. Arnold suggests that there's two approaches to creating a clear vision. So that might have sounded quite subtle and that's kind of what you want with compression. You don't want it to be super noticeable and this will actually have a big impact when you combine it with music and sound effects just to help the vocals sit at a nice level with all of the other audio elements in the mix. There's another super cool use for compressors and that's to automatically make background music go quieter when people are talking and then automatically raise the level of background music when people stop talking. It's called sidechain compression or audio ducking and that's exactly what you'll learn about in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.